an A. You've got Q's, we got A's. A. 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 Anybody, at, uh, anybody here come from Drew's shadow yeah. concert? Yeah. 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 I was really nervous and now I feel very light headed, but it's nice. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's how you know you did it right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, here we are. Uh, you know, any questions about the season? This is why we have this. We have an audience mic over here, so feel free to come down. Or if you uh, need it brought to you, you, just raise your hand, and we'll make sure that you get in the uh, the queue, so to speak. So let's so lean lean in uh, to the microphone, kind of close, and just let us know what you need. So my family has been doing this since 2017. I'd say it's an important part of my son's growth. He asked us to misgender him in Florida to feel safer. He also asked that he not have to come back to Florida again. The question is, do you have a time frame on when there will be an event we can attend again? Well, first of all, It's a monstrous thing, and we we are at the moment stuck in it. 
Yeah. You know, our our event, we got to the point. It's it's a blessing and a terrible curse in this particular case that this event is very geared towards and operates very well on ships uh, like this specific ship, especially and its sister class ships, as far as the size of the venues and the types of venues available to us. And they, you know, they don't deploy in too many places, and unfortunately, not yet in on the west coast, or at least when we need them. And just as an example, if we were to go to the next size ship, which is what usually sails out of uh, San Diego these days, it would we would basically have to reinvent this event because even though it holds more people, the main theater, for example, holds 200 fewer people and it's in the round. And the back deck isn't oddly enough as accommodating for a large stage. Uh, and the spaces available on board are in different orientations, not necessarily better or worse. Sometimes, you know, we've, we've analyzed them, we've sailed on these other ships uh, to check them out as possibilities. Uh, the short version is, it would take kind of a ground up reinvention of this event in order to just move to that class of ship, for example. And that's not to say we can't and won't do that if we believe that circumstances are such that, you know, Atlanta, Florida becomes completely untenable. Um, but it's also not, it, we can't just say, we'll just pick this up and put it down on this other ship that's available. Um, and, and, and you know, I, I don't, I imagine it's not very helpful for you to, to just hear the reasons why um, it's not just an easy thing that we can, we can do. And uh, please understand that we really do. Oh, no, I, yeah. I understand. There's what, there's what you have to do, and there's what I have to do for my family. Absolutely, of course. As, as much as this is also family. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, it's, I, it's absolutely it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. absolutely yeah. heartbreaking. Yeah. Really. It, it hurts us genuinely when we hear these stories from, you know, particularly the trans community within uh, our attendees. You know, uh, we, we hate to hear it. And, you know, we talk at length all the time about how can we mitigate this, how can we change it, what, what is possible and what is available to us, and even sort of, you know, are there ways that we can, you know, funnel the attendees to through the safest possible path while they are in Florida for the extent they have to be in Florida for this event, if that's where we're stuck being for however long. And um, but just to reiterate what Drew brought up at the beginning is that we try to make the best world we can here. And it's it's sad that that we can't there's a limit to where we can extend it. And I'm very sorry. Yeah, but to make it absolutely to make it absolutely clear we clearly absolutely hear uh, and welcome that kind of feedback. Uh, whether it's direct or we hear about it through the Facebook group or the Discord and we understand uh, and it, it affects us and we're not just shrugging our shoulders and saying, Well, sorry, but it's a business or whatever. It's, it, it is important to us the health and safety. It's one of the tenets of our opportunity. We wish we had a, a better, easier answer uh, other than that. That's just the one we can hear right now. But we continue to listen, we continue to learn, we continue to work towards trying to improve the event uh, in multiple ways. So thank you for your feedback. Even when it's, you know, when it's angry, we understand the anger, we know where it's coming from. And, and yeah, you know, I think I speak on behalf of myself and the rest of the attendees. Like, we love that we're here, and we, you know, yeah. As much as much as love as I can to as a person, I talk to your attend. And you know, with, yeah, this experience you're having and who you are and expressing it freely, it, that's like the coolest part of doing this is to give that space to people and that. That that's not going to be possible for you is it's really sad. And we hope that there are ways that you can continue to participate in the community because um, I know that everybody feels this. And not to wrap it up glibly, but genuinely, Ron DeSantis can go find himself hard. Hi. Um, I live in Europe and I'm not American, so I don't have exactly the right political context. 
So, sorry, this is a difficult and I acknowledge sensitive question. Um, do you envision that the crews will require masking indefinitely? And if not, what would it take to make them optional in the future? Uh, well, you, you know, the, the masking question is a difficult one. It's, it's, complicated. it's a complicated decision to make. Um, and we uh, look at a number of different factors, and some of them conflict with one another. Um, and then we try to sort of thread the needle. What we try to consider is, uh, you know, science, uh, official recommendations uh, from uh, government health organizations, uh, you know, what uh, standard practices are on cruise ships and within the cruise industry. Uh, also, uh, what uh, we believe the community wants, and again, that's obviously a very uh, broad spectrum of, of, of opinions and, and uh, desires as far as masking goes. Uh, and then we try to make the best, the decision that I think supports the community best, that is, that sort of errs on the side of more safety uh, and errs on the side of um, allowing more people uh, to feel comfortable attending. Um, and we obviously recognize that anytime we make a decision like this, it's going to make some people happy and some people less happy, and that's just, I mean, there's 2,000 people who come on the ship, we can't, there's no way we can have a massive policy that everybody likes. Uh, so that's how we ended up in this place. Uh, uh, and the, the process will be largely the same as we look at next year. I can tell you that uh, we are very much hoping to make this decision a lot earlier. And, then um, and we understand that that was part of what, what made it difficult for everybody this year. But you know, it's the way, you know, a year ago, I mean, the, the, the COVID situation has moved and changed so quickly at times that you kind of have to try to skate to where the puck is going to be. Um, and I think, you know, in recent uh, weeks and months, it's been, the numbers have been more stable. It doesn't seem to be swinging wildly in one direction or another. You know, all we can do is look at the tr trend and try to predict, but I, you know, I, we have all talked about how we, we really, really would like to make a decision early on and let everybody know what it is so that they can decide what they want to do. That being said, we are also really adamant that if the situation changes and the, uh, we do want to, we do need to make a change for safety reasons, then we will do so. So, I, you know, I don't have an answer for you. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't have, masking is different in, in, in wherever you are, I think it's, the, you know. From county to county. Yeah, exactly. So it's very hard for us to predict what we're going to do. We're going to make the decision the same way, but again, we're going to try to make it earlier. And our, our plan right now is to make that decision before the 100% refund deadline is done, knowing that, yeah. yeah. So the, the timing for this year, uh, we were trying to err on the side of caution because we had this new variant and this we've seen what the winter surge was going to be like. Uh, and we didn't want to make you know decide one way and then turn around and have to decide another way. So we we're trying to just give you all one answer. But that said, we err a little too much on the side of answering it too late. We fully understand, and so yes, we are going to make that decision and, earlier either way. And the other part of that. Um, so there's, there's that, and also that it's a lot like Florida, in that there are things that are well out of our control, and they involve um, laws, um, legal issues that aren't settled, and that they're evolving. So even when we announce that policy, uh, we can't 100% guarantee that if we say there will be no mess, or there will be mess, that we have to react uh, to all these things. But we did learn the lesson um, that the earliest we can provide good information we will. And, and yeah, just for oh, pardon me. Uh, regar regarding the feedback, um, you know, it, even when it's hard to hear and that there's anger and that we really do appreciate it, it's important to know where everybody is. And I want to say for both the guests, 
for whom masking this year has been incredibly important, and also the guests for whom it has been a turnoff, that we, we really hear that, and we are going to review along with everything else the feedback after this event. And there will be a question in the survey about this as we, if we have I've been on the, the cruise before. We do have a survey. We really do want to hear what you what you think and feel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Claudia Schneider, and my wife and I first came on one of these for our sort of delayed honeymoon, and we've been on five of them, and it's been awesome. But even though we didn't get married until it was nationally legal, every year we have thought. Do we have to bring a power of attorney so if one of us ends up in a hospital in Florida, we are sure that we're going to be able to do what married couples are supposed to be able to do for each other? And we have unfortunately made the decision that we are going to cancel our reservation for next year. Um, and I've been you know, sharing like, anecdotes with friends who are not on the boat, and one of them is like, you sold me. I'm talking to you know all, my whole family, and I was like, your family includes two black parents women. I could not, in your conscience, encourage you to vote for next year. Um, I know you know what the situation is for people in Florida, but I just want to say it's you, and it would be the great sadness if we don't go on next year's cruise, but we all have certain so. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, yeah, we, we hear you, we definitely hear you. Yeah, and and there, okay. No, I can't. Um, you guys have any amazing ideas, right? Because <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's just, that is not an easy decision to make, and I'm sorry. And we see, we hear not just the feedback, but the emotion, and, and it's very rough. So. Hey, uh, long time cruiser, first time question asker. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I, you know, I, I do appreciate everybody's situation, and I don't have any impacts is as great as those. Uh, I did first want to say thank you. Um, I feel like I'm a better person for having a on this cruise. I don't have a, a lot of things to deal with, but I know I'm a better person because I was here. Um, just a couple of quick questions. Um, what Make, what in your eyes makes for a more or less successful cruise? It might be an easy throwaway answer. Um, and also, would you consider and or what circumstances would it take for maybe having multiple cruises, maybe even multiple smaller cruises to accommodate different you know, ports of, of call and as well as ports of leaving? Maybe these were already asked, but uh, just a, a couple of things like here in you almost went broke on 2018. Uh, maybe that's not even uh, possible. <laughs> but uh, you know, what what would it take? What in your eyes would make it successful enough to maybe split it up uh, to do a little bit? Split the party is what you're asking us to do. Uh, <laughs> I never split the party. Double the party. Uh, I, I mean, I will say that the the thing to me that makes for a su successful cruise. I mean, I, I don't know how. You know, if we knew how to do it right every time, we would do it. <laughs> you know, we know the bits and pieces that we have to, we know the general list of inputs that we need to provide to, to make it turn out right. But, you know, my assessment of it is, a, is a, you know, how much, how much people enjoy themselves and feel like they are, uh, you know, with a, with a community that respects them and, and uh, allows them to be themselves while we're on board, and, and that's, to me, that is you know, the most important thing that we do, the goal that we're always shooting for, and so that's, 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 that's my measure of whether it's a success or not. Yeah, it's, um, I mentioned the survey before, from the start, that's been it, is we throw out these uh, fun, dumb ideas, whatever they are, and the things that the community reacts to or brings, like the tabletop game is something that just evolved naturally from the community, same with crafting. So um, that's what makes it successful is seeing what people are doing, are, are doing uh, and doing more of that. As far as um, expansion, that's supply and demand. Um, but always if we were to do it to make sure that 
we were doing it in a way that meant more people could experience this. So we're not going to do it just for the sake of it. Um, and we'll see. And um, you know, it's true that, that you know, we don't know. We don't know what demand will be. And uh, we'd like to do that, but no uh, question mark. Yep. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, hi, this is a little less a question than a comment. Uh, I am loving the back uh, concert, and back stage and deck. Uh, I mean, for music performances, it, it's great to be able to walk around and talk to people, go front and dance if I want to, or go back and rest or something. Uh, I'm hoping we're going to get that again. Uh, I'm not sure if I would prefer a pool cover or not. You know, maybe a mismeasurement left you with the great thing, because if that was a bunch of chairs, it might, to me, be less cool than it is now. So, um, yeah. I'm glad you thought of that. I'm glad you were able to make it work. I would love to see it again. Uh, and to everyone, I'm the guy that hands off the little metal tags. Okay, <laughs> watch them. This is what I look like today. Just kind of right. Yeah, thank you, Ash. It, uh, that uh, backstage has been, I mean, it's very fun to play, and I agree going out there and, and walking around and, and seeing the vibe out there. It's a, it's a pleasure. It's a different it's a different thing, and it's really nice. Um, and yeah, the pool cover, uh, happy accident left, left a kind of cool situation. You know, we will, um, we will of course, evaluate all the feedback and, and talk to the performers and talk to our crew and, and listen to what you have to say. And, make a decision about how, how to run it this year, but yeah, I appreciate that feedback. Thank you. I feel comfortable sharing our internal discussions just sort of amongst ourselves as the week has gone on. Is that people seem to very much be enjoying the back deck stage. They seem to be enjoying the fact that the pool cover isn't there and that the pool is an option. Uh, I was honestly more skeptical than anyone and more worried about potential for injury. It's all the pool cover. We've yeah, all the pool cover was on my nameplate on my desk. But, um, you know, I, I thought it's been great. One of the things, assuming we bring the back deck stage back next year and all current indications and feedback pending, seems like we will, it seems to have gone very well. Uh, we will do, try to do a better job having learned from this year as far as seating arrangements out there and having more chairs available. Uh, and there's limitations space-wise, certainly, but we just essentially we ran out of chairs. We didn't bring enough chairs. Yeah, we left one out. Uh, but that's that's certainly the baseline of, of our expectation. Again, pending, you know, we, we say it a lot, but it, it genuinely, like the, we send out the post truth survey. It's long. We know that it's long, but it's very valuable to us. And we take every response to heart and we, we aggregate that information to what helps drive our next decisions. Uh, so yeah, that's that's our current thinking right now. Who, who can say for sure, but certainly trends trends indicate positively on Back and, stage. and there will be a separate little section this year just for feedback on that. Yeah, I mean, and just two, you know, random pool cover related items. Um, the one being a zombie in the pool during Rita Brains was very fun for me. Um, and uh, really quite athletic, I think. Cool. Uh, but also that, you know, that the pool cover is so large you can't fit in the elevators, and each section is like 150 pounds and needs to be carried up the stairs from A deck to deck nine. Um, so we didn't be sorry if it goes away. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the folks who loved it, um, myself a bit included, um, yeah. <laughs> the head is heavy. <laughs> Would have been nice for her. Good question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, you already addressed one aspect of the masking policy, which was the timing of the announcement. Um, the other concern that I've seen and have experienced is uh, people not following the masking policy. And so my question is, what can be done if there are masks on 2024 to ensure that the policy is followed more uh, rigorously? rigorously? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, first off, like there. Some, there are always going to be people, I think, going forward in this world who want to be masking. There certainly would never be a policy that made it against the rules. I, no masks. I, I, I'm never there will be masks on 2024. Cover not. I'm now taking a flight again without a mask. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, but as to what the policy is, as, as we've said, we're you know, not ready to stay. Yeah, and as far as, uh, you know, 
enforcing it, you know, this is hard because there, again, there are a lot of people on the ship. Um, when somebody is not wearing a mask, it is very difficult to tell, just like poking, just said, poking your head into a room like this, and you see somebody not wearing a mask, are they, are they having a drink? Or, or did they just get a drink? Did they just finish a drink and they've forgotten to put it back on? Are they flaunting the rules? Are they trying to get away with something? You can't, it's very difficult to tell. So the, you know, while it would be great if we had, uh, uh, you know, a fleet of a thousand robot drones who could fly around the ship and know what's in everybody's hearts and uh, remind the people who need to be reminded of the masks on, you know, it's just, it's just an impossible undertaking. And so, you know, in last year, uh, you know, we, we really, you know, it was even more of an issue last year because like, there were still people who were, who were uh, wishing that we were maskless last year. And obviously it was the same policy. Um, and, you know, I think that what we, what we hope, we've always sort of relied on this community to regulate itself, and, and in, in my experience, this may not be a place experience, but, um, you know, just anecdotally, it seems like we are very supportive and, and uh, good at taking care of each other in this face-to-face, person-to-person way, and so, you know, I would encourage you, if you are in a room and there's somebody who's not wearing a mask, I think you should feel free to say, like, hey, would you mind putting on a mask? And I would be willing to bet most of the time, they'll be like, oh yeah, I forgot. Um, and if they do not, then if they refuse, then please let us know. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure what else to say about that. It's, it's I, I, do, I don't know if anybody, I don't know if you have any suggestions about how we should um, I have heard other conventions have like a three strikes or out type policy and right. they have people that try to monitor it and if they find someone out of compliance, they like punch a card or something so you can keep track of it. It's not perfect. Yeah. Um, I, I think the only other suggestion I have is when making the masking announcements, um, if you could just remind everybody that this is for the health and safety of all of our guests and that it's for the health and safety of people that are, you know, compromised, that that would hopefully encourage people to follow it more rigorously. Yeah. Thank you. First cruise. Thank well, you. Well, it's well. everything I knew. I wanted the first cruise to be my first cruise, and the second cruise, and the third cruise, and the fourth cruise. It took me 10 years to have enough money to come. So here's an idea about Florida, but I feel sure you've talked about this and you have an answer. I know you, I heard what you said about you sell it on itinerary while people really appreciate the content. But perhaps for all the people who might, mm, be sad about doing the same itinerary. Maybe there are many more people like me who would come if it was on land and we could afford it better. And I feel like you definitely asked yourself this question. So I want yeah. to know what you're Funny enough, we have. Yeah. <laughs> Every year. <laughs> yeah, so we've looked at what makes this work. And it's a lot of things. And what makes it unique. And we have looked for a landing analog to it. Um, well, I think one of the keys is that it's a closed environment, but it touches down in places, which is enough to do, but not so much that, that you lose the cohesion. Like we're forced to be in a community in some ways because we're on a ship together. Uh, but there also have to be amenities and, and comfortable things. So, we looked at, you can't do something like a convention center in a major city because then we go out to the restaurants here and we lose the center. Um, there's also the model of um, like a, a folk festival or a big outdoor festival where you can, but you don't have the range of attractions and variety. And right? Or maybe a resort somewhere. Yeah, yeah. that too. Yeah. Uh, but then you might have to lock the doors to keep it in. <laughs> 
I think that he's putting out a great message to our attendees. <laughs> you're stuck, you don't understand. You're stuck in here with me. We have looked at that, and the numbers don't work. Like, in terms of uh, the per diem costs, like, a cruise is actually a very good value for what you get. And we haven't, uh, we still love to find one, but finding something that hits all those sweet spots. And seriously, if you or anybody else can think of something like that, please, in the feedback, so we'll talk about the different decks we would do. Um, we'd be open to it, and for sure, it'd just be like, it's difficult, like Paul had said, even to translate this to a different type of ship um, to, to make it work. And we did move from the, uh, one set of ships, much larger ships, and back again, it worked, it can be done. But we wouldn't do it lightly, and that would be a massive transition. And it's not quite the same thing, what we have discussed and have increasingly discussed in recent years, you know, maybe not a full weekend convention style, everybody piling to a place, but doing, not necessarily a full touring version of it, but doing sort of smaller concert versions, where say the three of us and regional people who are clicking. Everybody kind of better remembers Woodstock, the show that so much and Adam Savage would bring around to different places every so often. Something like that. It's obviously not the same thing, but to at least get a taste and to you know, meet back up with some of the people who have been on this experience and to give some other people a taste of what this experience is like, you know, at a convention or at a theater near a convention or just, you know, however that works. Uh, we definitely looked into and are continuing to look into that as an option. And as, I, you know, as we said, it's obviously not the same thing as the cruise or some sort of communal collective experience for longer than a day or two, but it's something, and it's also something that we are reasonably capable of. I mean, we'd love to take you all to a, a summer camp somewhere for a week, but it's, it, it's not easy, you know, you can't just say, well, let's just do all of this, but do it on land. You know, it's a whole different uh, a, you know, organizational, just the thoughts of how to repalletize everything and redistribute it alone, I'm sure it's getting through the fits. Well, that, I think that's, to, to jump in briefly, one of the things that makes the, this such a special venue is the amazing support that we're able to get from the ship's crew and the customizability of the ship as a venue. Um, you know, the idea of going to a land to venue where the food is this good, where the service is this good, where uh, at a moment's notice, a, an electrician will come and add in power drops, where, I mean, the, there's 950 crew here. Um, and, and that is, and, and the, the support that we get to run this event from them is difficult to overstate. They are incredibly large without without the support of the ship we have to be and like that would definitely you know if we needed to spend a week with a crew of two hundred people setting up a place and then like the food's not as good or the, the you know bat your bathroom breaks and somebody doesn't show up to fix it. Like it, there's something nice about this. Spiders in your tent. Yeah. There's there will be spiders. Hi, I have um, an idea and then a comment. Um, the idea where I'm masking and they're being masking is why I'm here this year. Um, is that my home convention, what they did when they announced their masking policy for this year, is they said, all masks, all vaxxed. And from this point on, we will only get more strict. We are not gonna loosen up. And it doesn't matter like which way you guys are gonna go or which way you're thinking, but if when you announce your policy you say we're considering these different things and these are the parts that can change and these are the parts that will not change from here on or will only get strict or will only get looser whatever mm -hmm. you guys decide i think that that would help a lot for people to keep their balance in the way yeah, that makes a lot of sense so let me just say back to you we said so i'm sure i understand so you're saying like uh basically uh, announce the masking policy but be clear about which aspects might change and which, which direction correct Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I would also say if you're looking at CDC numbers, please look at the hospital numbers and not the community numbers because the community numbers are bullshit. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so my comment is, I am. Uh, this is my second cruise. Uh, my family, we're a two-mom family, and we were planning on coming. We can't afford to come every year either, but every two years or so was kind of our goal. And um, like the person who had to bring their marriage license, we had to bring our adoption decree in order to make sure that if anything happened to our kid, that both of us had rights to him and rights to say what could happen to him um, because of Florida. Yeah. 
Um, and also, he is a cisgender boy. He's four, but he loves his long hair and his bangs, and he loves to wear pink. And so he's misgendered constantly everywhere we go. Like, that's just normal, right? But when we're back home, if I say a sentence, you know, they say she and I say he, then they correct themselves. And it really devastates him when he, people have been corrected and they continue to call him she. He's like, I'm not a girl, I'm a boy. Yeah. And that has been happening consistently, even if I say he really loudly to make sure in Florida and on the ship, to be honest, where people are not listening and so he is being misgendered all over and over and over again. And I'm really worried because he's four and this is the age where you start to learn what kind of boy you're allowed to be. Yeah, sure. And I don't know if by the time he's six that he will still love pink even though it's his absolute favorite color and he'll still want to wear his hair long. Yeah. Um, but I do know that as long as we're going out of Florida, I'm not coming back either. And my family's not either because it's not safe for us. Yeah. Um, can I can I ask you the misgendering? Do you find that that is happening mostly with attendees or with ship staff or with both? Mostly or? with ship staff. Uh huh. Um, but not only. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sorry about that, and um, yeah, I mean, thank, thank you for that feedback. Um, you know, we do we do talk a lot about uh, gender with the ship staff. Uh, you know, the various meetings that we have with them specifically, we say you know. Don't don't use gender, you know. Because they they have a lot of training to you know, sir, sir and ma'am, and, and we from the very beginning. That's one of the first things we say in the week long uh, site visit meeting that we have to to the room. Um, and uh, you know, I think one of the things that has happened in the cruise industry and uh, in this cruise line is that the uh, the crew had uh, a terrible time during COVID. You know, people were stuck on ships for months and, and couldn't get home because the ports were closed. And nobody could fly anywhere, and then uh, a lot of them did get home and didn't know that when they were going to have a job on a cruise ship again and have never returned. So uh, the industry—it's an industry-wide problem that they are are, are still working on building back um, their uh, their crews uh, and. I think it's entirely possible that there are uh, a lot of new uh, people on the, on the crew this year. Um, uh, you know, I think that I think that the, the, the crew who has been on a Joko cruise before, at least one time before, has a better has a better sense of it. So that I'm, I'm not trying to excuse it. Obviously, it shouldn't be happening, but uh, I think that may be an aspect of what we're seeing. And if you're comfortable sharing your information with Infodesk or with us after the cruise, you know. Uh, we would like to share that feedback with the ship, with the you know, whole course of this organization yeah. behind it. That's not acceptable. And I'm sorry. Yeah. And this feedback is also, um, we do share this with our industry people uh, in the room right now. So hearing this is, is important for one event of the year, um, but, but we do have goals. And regarding what we've said, we have a couple people address the issue right now. Um, it is the most important to us that everyone make the decision that is best for you and your family's safety and health, mental and otherwise. And we are, of course, sad to lose a person for you know who would enjoy this event. Uh, I mean, we'll be fine. We are sad you know, if this is thing you want to do and can't because of the situation. Um, and I can only be there. You know, we absolutely hear you, and you're. you're your stories and your questions and your concerns are not falling on deaf ears and we're we want all of you to be able to come here yeah, and feel yeah. safe on the way and during the trip and on the way home. Exactly. And and we're all, you know, the, the entire country and beyond is going through some very deep, very rough, very quick moving waters and transitions and changes and we all want to help each other ride it out. And unfortunately, much as we would love to just pick up and move to another location, we can't do that in the short term. We promise you we are working on considering options to be able to make a version of this event or this event uh, you know, happen in a place where you know, everyone does feel safe to come and attend. Um, but you know, please do, you know, do what you have to for your own and security for that, those you love. And 
the meantime, don't stop talking to us, please. You know, continue to to. Um, it's it's very good to hear this feedback. It's important for us to hear. Hi, I'm um, plus one out of Florida, plus one for masking to infinity because it's what helps me feel safe while I'm here on board. And frankly, I I have all this gray hair because I've spent the last three years arguing with the management in my office and in my county about the necessity of safety for workers because somehow I ended up in union leadership. And it is grueling to argue with people who don't believe that masking is essential. So to whatever extent you can, please don't make attendees responsible for policing each other. That's so hard to do. The real reason that I'm here is a very selfish concern. Um, I'm not going ashore tomorrow at Half Moon Key because last year, the thing that I was hoping was going to be really great was a decidedly mixed experience at best. I left some feedback for Cal and for the home office, and I didn't hear anything back. So I just wanted to let you know that while the staff on Half Moon Key was really, really helpful, I suggested to Hal and to the home office that you create an excursion for Half Moon Key for people with limited mobility. So that they would get access to a beach chair, because they had a beach chair, but they didn't know how to use it. I was like, hi, I can help you. Um, the shuttles between the food and the beach are not accessible. And by the time we got over there on the tender, all of the clamshells close to the walkway were taken. So they made amends for almost everything, but the real kicker was that I had to choose between the bathroom and lunch. So I chose bathroom. And I had a really good time. I dumped myself in the Caribbean, which was what I wanted to do. But then as I was leaving, the little foot wash, not accessible. I had to come back on the ship all sandy and salty about it. And so, literally, yeah. literally. literally salty. And so, it's something that could be fixed without a lot. It would be a perfect solution, but it would be a better solution to allow people to self-identify as I need more help to enjoy Half Moon Key. Here is what I need. The staff was great, but I think we could do better. Thank you. Thank you. And we actually have been uh, working more on accessibility in particular, um, and this is something we can take to that panel. Also, we do know that there are plans for them to redo half community, uh, and this is something we can bring to them. Uh, if they're making these plans anew, this could be something they consider from, from the start. Yeah, they have, they, they've got a plan in place that has been pushed several times thanks to COVID, but they are making Half Moon Key a, uh, they're building a pier and digging the trench so it will no longer be tender port. Unfortunately, it's not a quick process, and as we say, it has been pushed a number of times because of the pandemic, but it is something that is in the future. Uh, the concrete plans in the future, but uh, again, I know we, we will, you know, we will be sure, as well should you, to pass along our concerns to Holland America. Uh, you know, we, to the extent we can, every time we try to. And obviously, they are a very large corporation, and we are a single event. But it is important. It is very important to us that are going to uh, everyone, including accessibility issues. And we know that they themselves are up against uh, issues of we're we're in foreign places that are not subject to the ADA. And uh, sometimes the easy choice is not the best choice on their end. There's things that they may or may not have control of. But that said, we absolutely will continue on our end to advocate for these sorts of things. I think everything you suggested is a wonderful idea. Uh, and we will actually probably talk to you. you know, once we're back from the cruise, uh, you know, well, it's a dark excursion. Let's say there's something we can do that, it, you know, that is possible for, for you tomorrow. I would say go wash. 
I don't know about that. That's the degree build of the life. <laughs> you know, getting getting you know there and back again. Um, we will we will look at. It. I, I mean, I, I'm going to go talk to someone after this when when there's a moment. And it, and it is not like our event is the only cruise that ever has people in wheelchairs by any stretch. So it's not all in America. It seems like a very simple ask and and recommendation to them to make some clamshells and some uh, lounge chairs reserved for uh, accessibility, which is something we tried to do at, at all you know, our onboard events. Accessible seats and on the back next shape, next uh, stage area, we have accessible seating area. Uh, and such, so things we always try to bear in mind. I mean, it's absolutely, you know, we hate that, you know, you have to keep shouting about it in order to, to be heard, but let's keep sweeping that wheel. We're happy to sweep it uh, on your behalf as well. So, but thank you for you know, reminding us again and, yeah. and keeping us uh, motivated to do so. And it's absolutely possible to provide some amount of that additional assistance and, and clarity and messaging about what is available. Um, Riz has DJ to shore, and we've helped to provide mobility assistance there. So there, we will, yeah, we, we will do, we will do what we can for tomorrow um, and, and going forward. And thank you, and keep keep telling us if we keep screwing up. <laughs> we're going to have to end shortly. We're going to try and work through as much of this line as possible behind the cap the line there, unless there was anyone else who uh, couldn't can't make it down to the microphone who had a question. Otherwise, go right ahead. Hi, my name is Alex, this is my sixth cruise, and um, I don't have a question, but I would like to add my voice to those who are calling for us to pull out of Florida. And there are a number of, there are a number of my friends who would have an absolute blast here, and I can't recommend that they come because it would require them to pass the Florida in order to get here. Thank you. Thank you. Hey guys, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that's a question and more observation, but we really need to just put an end to our. As far as I can tell, it was made useful for about 10 minutes in 2014 when we called everybody to the labyrinth, had an impromptu dance party, we had everybody, as was our royal prerogative at the time, um, and then it's been down a lot ever since. And I think um, my hot take beyond that is if people have gotten in trouble for like how they act on Twitter, barring like really bad offenses, like, we should all start from zero. It's as if we handed people basically an anger pill and a loaded gun and said, behave. And the, the thing that kills me about it is for everything that's probably been talked about on Twitter, my friends and I in the boat have had discussions about those topics, and they've been deep and sometimes they've been difficult, but because we love one another and because we knew each other before we ever ran into it, the digital incarnation of one another, we are willing to extend grace to one another. And it, I really, really hate that there are people who are not enjoying this cruise or who are having a difficult time because they're not, as you said, Jonathan, able to interact face to face. And that has always been the strength of this cruise. And I, I just, I, it, it, like if we need to have like templates for like, hey, meet up here, or hey, here, how you, here's how you can reach me, cool. But like, we're on a boat together. Like how often, like <laughs> you run into everybody all the time. And I think the, the, my closing thought is we just had like a memorial service. Um, my girlfriend and a couple of our friends or one of our friends who we knew up in a large way through the boat. And not once did it come up about the things he tweeted. But like, it came up like, here are all the, like, the people he was excited to make happy and to see happy. And I, I don't want us to become enemies to one another. Okay. And then when we have this conversation every year, and we had it last night, um, and I think you said it as well as we could have. Hi, so we've already heard a lot about the Florida situation and what you're doing to look into it, address uh, the situation. But I want to ask this for both on behalf of myself as a trans person and a lot of current and past trans cruisers and people in that community. Um, 
Are you doing everything you can to get out of Florida? And can you give concrete examples of what you are doing? Well, doing um, has to do with what choices do we have for ships? And part of it is financial is in that can we put on an event on a much smaller ship and make this sustainable? And the answer is no. Can we move to a larger ship and have it be sustainable? The answer is no. The question is are there other itineraries that could be sustainable? And that's a big question mark too. And we do want to do it. And when we have the opportunity, we will. Um, and right now, the way our contracts work, we're locked in for what it is. Yeah, so, the cruise industry works on a multi-year timeline. Um, yeah, we are, and, and, as, as he says, we are, we are locked in for some time. I'm not sure if we could just decide to break our contract, uh, and that would put us in a position of having to deal with that fact. And so we try to find a way to make, you know, to to service all of our community members, uh, including our trans community members, and also keep our event sustainable and look, this is also our jobs. Uh, and that's not to say that we value that more than your health and safety, but um, we're trying to find a way to keep everything. I'll say our hope is that because, and this is why this feedback is important, uh, and because we can bring this as to why it's important for there to be options other than Florida, because these ships can move around at the other places. I'll say one of the other options is potential is to fly at Puerto Rico. Um, but I'll say that would be probably just guessing 25 to 30 percent more costs. And the, event, and the event would be two to three days shorter because the ship doesn't operate originally out of Puerto Rico, so it would sail in Florida to drop off the previous sailing, then have to sail to Puerto Rico, and then we'd get on it, then we'd have to get off, and then sail back to Florida. Um, so it's, you know, but there, there's a lot of math and moving parts involved, and I don't mean to be clear describing it that way, but it is, it is a very difficult situation to try and juggle all of the moving parts. Um, and again, that's not to excuse ourselves or say, well, we might as well not even try, because we are, we are trying, but, and we promise that we, we hear and, and we are working. Um, but it's, 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 it's a, difficult, a difficult road, and a, and a lengthy road, unfortunately. But there's no trouble. A couple of specific things, and there are a dozen more, but we do chase these down. And when we see an opportunity, we will. Okay, thank you very much. Um, just wanted to say that if the situation continues as it currently looks to be continuing to head out of Florida, uh, both myself and many other who I've heard of, many other people, will not be able to keep coming. Um, and so my last quick question uh, linked to that is, can you share anything about 2025? Uh, 2025. About the itinerary, where we would be sailing from then, any info? I think the dates have already been announced, but... Uh, 2025? You're talking about next year? Yes, year after 24. 25. After Well, that's right, we accidentally announced it. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, we are currently contracted out of Florida for 2025. I can say that. Okay, thank you for the confirmation. Yeah. Hello. Uh, first of all, plus one, no Florida, and plus one, continue masking. Um, um, does the THO have on staff or via contract consulting a um, health and safety person who actually keeps up on all of this epidemiology. Um, and is the goal to get back to 2019 era infection control or do you guys like have a number of acceptable COVID diagnoses that you will consider well only five people got it this year, so that's fine. Or do you just not even get that information from Cal? Uh, so, sorry, so you're saying, is our goal to return to a 2019 
You mean, in other words, no, no mass, you talk about pre-COVID. Yeah, are you, are you trying to get back to a pre-COVID state of uh, operation, or are you, are you accepting that uh, there's always going to be some measure of this masking policy? But that's actually not really the important part of the question I'm asking. I'm asking is oh, how right. are you guys making, are you guys consulting with actual epidemiologists versus just reading like CDC guidance? Um, and does how actually inform you as to incident incidents of infection that happen on board? So you actually have information to go on as to what's working and what's not. Uh, yeah, yeah, we do, and and uh, we we don't have an, an epidemiologist uh, on staff or anything like that. Uh, and no, I think it's all a wide variety of sources. We're not just sort of looking at what's listed in the Washington Post every day on their chart or anything like that. We do. Look, to the extent that we can, as lay people, you know, ask people who know more than we do for multiple sources and try and just get a general sense. There's no sort of magical mathematical formula where we will say, aha, y equals six, so now we can change the policy here. We, uh, we are informed of uh, the various uh, health incidents and such on board our sailing. We don't get that information at least in any detail for uh, any other sailings out of hell other than what they may publicly report, um, if that's part of your question. Um, but you know, again, we're not looking for, you know, we're not looking for a specific number or a zero number necessarily. Just each year we feel we have to evaluate where the situation is, where the pandemic is pointing, and, uh, and I, I, I can't give you a really more specific answer than that, unfortunately. I think one of the kind of complicated things about the new era, I mean, like, in, are we trying to go back to 2019? I mean, I, anybody who's been through this knows we, we can't because the world's different. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that changed with the pandemic was the addition of, like, today, in some sense, where it's like, are, you, are we epidemiologists and can we fix the problems with social media? And we can't, and we aren't. And like our expertise is throwing a vacation. Um, and and that's, that is not to, that is not to poo poo those concerns. We absolutely can slow the sources that we do. But there are there are there are limitations to what our capabilities are as an organization with a with a year round W two staff and more. Um, and and also that I don't believe that you can run a major event. And let alone a cruise ship with the same risk profile that you can experience in other settings. And in my household, uh, Mrs. Storm lives with a chronic condition that uh, in her risk profile she, well, profile, she determined that she did, it was not an acceptable risk for her. And it obviously makes her sad and me sad. Um, but that's where we are at this moment. We hope Thank you. Thank you. Changes. Uh, real quick, uh, I hopefully your questions are quick. I don't mean to rush you greatly. We are running a little over. We did. We'd love to get to your questions if you're still interested in this thing. Hi, uh, I'm Nick. I'll be very brief. How has the act of managing the cruise impacted you personally and creatively? And are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. You know, I. Um, we, <laughs> we have all, I think, had this experience this year of, uh, you know, the world continues to get weird and terrible in, in new surprising ways every day. Um, it has been a rough few years uh, for everybody. I know we've all had our own struggles of various kinds. Um, uh, and I think especially this year, we really hear the increased volume uh, from people who are hurting, from all that stuff that's happening. And you know, we really do care about this community and this event and is so important to us that everyone is able to come and wants to come and that everybody who is here feels comfortable being themselves. And I think we have all heard loud and clear that there's a lot more uh, pain out there this year. And it is hard to hear, uh, and not that you shouldn't be telling us. I want you to tell us, but it is hard to hear because, um, you know, it makes us sad to think that we are not able to uh, 
to reach that goal. And so we've all had moments where we've been uh, thinking about these issues and talking about these issues and trying to figure out how to make it better and try to solve these problems. And we literally, <laughs> sorry, we literally have to go out and walk to the back deck to see people having a good time <laughs> and being together uh, to remind us that that is, is also happening to some extent. That is also a thing that is happening here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, in answer to your question, uh, running this cruise over the past 12 cruises, it's made me a much more empathetic person. You know, I like to think I was empathetic and then I met you all. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's made me a kinder person. It's made me a more open person. I mean, the, now I'm going to get pissed. I, we've all then, heard a shit ton about stuff that we didn't yeah. know about. Okay. The, 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 every year, the 80 million small and medium and large acts of kindness that I see on the ship over the course of the week really just buoys me uh, for the remainder of the, the year. I just think back on just all of the great people doing great things. And that's not to say this event is perfect, but it really it means as much to us as it does to all of you, we promise. It's, it's, this is, you know, it's a job, but it is not just our job by any stretch. We would not do this if we didn't enjoy it as much as we do. So thank you for that. Yeah. Oh, we're fine, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Last question, no pressure. I want to start by saying thank you for being vulnerable here and listening to us. Opinions is that I am an immunocompromised, disabled, chronically ill, trans parent of a trans teen. And I'm going to try and come back every year because I love you and I love what you give us. And I also run an animated convention, so I understand exactly how hard what you're trying to do is. With that wrapped up, my question <laughs> is how do you decide? What do you step by volunteer versus contract? Because I'm having this issue in my ambition <laughs> and I want to know. And also, you have untapped talent sitting in this auditorium for a couple of problems that I saw over this week that have been turned down when they volunteered to assist. And also, I know a professional in the industry who is a disability advocate who I would like to put you in contact with. Yeah, no, let's let's uh, let's talk. I mean, uh, you know, we it was actually uh, Cruz Montera's uh, initiative to start this uh, um, disability panel. Yeah, accessibility, yeah, accessibility panel, panel. and, and uh, uh, you know that's why that's how we you know we got feedback from the community and, and we uh, that's how we ended up with the assistive uh, listening devices uh, this year. There's plenty more that we can do, and yeah. We definitely, if you, uh, if you or anyone else out there is a person who, uh, you know, has knowledge about this and wants to share it with us, we, we want to hear it because we obviously have our own uh, blind spots and we can't, we can't see it the way you do. So we really do rely on you to tell us, like, this is not working and I know how to fix it. Like, that's great. That's really great to hear. So please, please, yes, we would love to exchange with folks here. Perfect. Oh, and well, just to your question um, about, uh, Helpers versus contract. Um, we, the contracted folks, have uh, signed the NDA that protects guest information and guest data, and they are, while they love this community, they are, they're not people who have, uh, who are here to also have their vacation, so we can ruin their days more. <laughs> um, and that's really where we we draw the lines. It's going to involve contact with, with sensitive guest information. We try to keep that on the contract side. And if it's going to involve, you know, long hours, um, mission critical stuff, carrying the pool cover up the stairs, that, that's all that's all contract. Throw the pool cover off the ship. Major impression. That would be the way. Not allowed. But well, thank you for your question. Thank you all for your questions. Uh, we're going to do a comedy panel now. We have to around the comedy panel. Genuinely, thank you all for coming uh, and have a great remainder of the cruise. And fill out those surveys after the cruise, please. <laughs>